Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at how you can bring your own operating system to Microsoft Azure by way of VHDs or virtual hard disk images. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at how you can use a virtual hard disk or a VHD on Azure to create virtual machines. Now we've looked at how you can use things like Cloud Init and how you can use custom shell extensions uh, to uh, create virtual machines and provision your software on Azure. But sometimes those won't work because the base operating system isn't available on the Azure marketplace. For instance, you might want to use something like a virtual appliance or you might want to do a lift and shift scenario from a virtual machine that you have running in your data center and you want to take that to Azure. And that, in these kinds of cases, uh, using a image of your virtual machine and then taking that to Azure would be very appropriate. But as a rule, you want to prefer using one of the marketplace images on Azure and customizing that to run your software as we've already looked at. But in the case where that's not an option, VHDs become very viable. So today we're going to do an extended demo on how you can use VHDs to create virtual machines with custom software on Microsoft Azure. For this demo, what I'm going to do is take this Linux Mint VM and I'm going to deploy it to Azure. I've actually already installed Linux Mint in a virtual machine on VirtualBox. Uh, you can use any virtualization software in most cases to build out uh, whatever operating system that you want to use to take it to Azure. And there are conversion tools that will allow you to take something like VMware and convert it to a format that will work on Azure. I'm using VirtualBox here because VirtualBox can create VHDs, which is really what I'm going to be pushing to Azure anyway. And a VHD is a file format for virtual hard disks. There's a few things that you need to know, though, whenever you go to create your virtual hard disk. I'm going to use uh, VirtualBox for this demo, but you can use Hyper-V or VMware, whichever one you want to choose. Or you could even use Quimu on Azure if you choose, uh, so want to. So when I create this, I'm going to um, create a new VM. I'm going to call this one Ubuntu one, and it's going to be Linux VM of, of one megabyte for memory. And I'm going to select create a new virtual hard disk now. And in this, the one thing that you want to make sure that you, that you're aware of is that you select both the correct format, which in this case is virtual hard disk. You don't want to use VMDX or VD, uh, virtual box disk images, uh, regardless of the software that you use, you want to ultimately end up with a virtual hard disk. And you also want to make sure that that virtual hard disk is fixed size versus using dynamically allocated disks. So a fixed size disk that is a VHD format. And the other thing that you want to make sure that you have on your virtual hard disk is that there is no fractional uh, megabytes that are uh, by fractional megabytes. You're not, your disk size isn't like 10.0001 gigabytes or 0.125 eight, nine, 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 uh, megabytes or whatever it might be. You want to make sure that the megabytes are rounded to the nearest megabyte. So there's no like kilobyte portions of your disk size because Azure measures disk sizes to the nearest megabyte using an integer and it can't support fractions of megabytes. And you'll get an error if you try to upload a VHD that has a fraction of a megabyte as part of the VHD. So the first thing you might have to do in some cases, if you're doing a lift and shift is, uh, resize the disc to a round megabyte number. In most cases, um, I like to choose just a round gigabyte just to make sure. So if I was creating a new one, I could select 10 gigabytes for a uh, Linux Mint, I needed at least 10, gigab 10 gigabytes. So I opted to just create a 12 gigabyte, uh, VHD for this demo. And once you got that VHD created, you just want to make sure that's in a VHD format and that it's fixed size and that it's rounded to a nearest megabyte. In most cases, I, like I said, I use gigabyte. But once you have that, your image should be ready to go uh, from the image perspective. Now, your operating system, though, will need to be prepared as well. Um, it is possible to lift and shift some operating systems out of the box to Azure. Uh, and in some cases, you would want to use more advanced tooling than what I'm going to be showing you today. But in any most cases, though, you, there's uh, guides on Azure for specific operating systems on how to prepare those for Azure. And most of the time, it involves installing some packages 
on your operating system so that it'll have the Azure agent running on the operating system as well as a number of other supporting tools on the virtual machine that will make it run optimally on Azure. Once you have your image prepared and the VHD is ready to go, you'll want to shut down your virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and take my shut mine down here and I'm going to make sure you do a full shutdown. You don't like suspend it or anything like that. Uh, you want to make sure that it goes down fully before you deploy this. So you don't want any locks on your files. So once your uh, virtual machine is shut down, you can go to the Azure portal and start working there. I'm here in the Azure portal and so what I want to do now is go ahead and create a storage account because this is where I'm going to upload my uh, VHD to. Um, let's look for storage accounts here and there's one. And let's go ahead and hit create. Um, you can basically choose, um, the, I'm going to choose the resource group I had. Make sure you have a unique name so I'm going to call it Blaze um, VHD and that should be unique. Um, and then I'm going to select um, central US for my region and the I can use uh, standard performance storage v2 that's fine uh, local redundant storage is probably fine for the demo here and I'm gonna take the defaults on these and uh, the rest of this stuff should be fine and go ahead and create this storage account and once this is created I'll be ready to upload my VHD my storage account deployed so I've browsed to it now I'm going to open it up uh, in, in, in Azure Storage Explorer. I can click on uh, Azure Storage, open in Explorer, and it's gonna give me this uh, tab here that I can select OK, and that won't actually open it if I click OK, but you can download Azure Storage Explorer and uh, install it on your PC, your Mac, or your Linux box. In this case, I'm just gonna hit open in Azure Storage Explorer, and that's going to give me an option to open Azure Storage Explorer, and that's gonna take me directly to this resource. And uh, with Azure Storage Explorer, I can actually upload things to this uh, storage account. Now, you'll want to use a uh, Azure Storage Explorer to actually upload things to Azure. And the reason why is the uh, optimization that Azure Storage Explorer will add to the upload process will uh, dramatically improve the upload speed. If you were to do it through the browser, it would take significantly longer to upload something to Azure. Um, and so using Storage Explorer will uh, give you the, the ability to rapid, more rapidly upload uh, VHDs to Azure. So I'm going to hit Create Container Blob, and I'm going to call it VHD here uh, by, by clicking on Blob Containers under my storage account. Now in this one, I am ready to uh, upload my VHD here. So if I select Upload, I'm going to select Upload Files, and I'm going to browse out to where I, to my uh, VHD. And uh, that's right here. I call it Demo VHD for my Ubuntu VM, and this VM is shut down. I'm going to select this, and notice I have a uh, block type. I want to select page blob, or you can check this box, upload VHD v or VHDX as blobs, uh, and this is recommended. And I'm going to use a page blob, uh, just select that explicitly. I'm not going to put that in a folder, and I'm going to click upload. And this will kick off the process for uploading the blob to Azure. Now, depending on your internet connection, it depends on how long this will actually take. Uh, in some cases, uh, if you have a, a fast connection, it could, it could take a matter of minutes. If it's slow, it could take, it could be as long as a couple of hours. The main thing you want to do is just monitor it and then come back when it's done. Okay, now it looks like my VHD finished uploading, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Azure portal and create an image from this. So to do that, I'm going to select Add here, and I'm going to search for Image, and select that, and it should give me this top image would be for a image for a virtual machine. I'm going to click Create, and in this wizard here, I'm going to call it uh, Linux mint for the name i'm going to keep it on that subscription select my linux mint resource group and i'm going to set the os disk to linux leave zone resili uh, redundant resiliency off um, and then i'm going to browse for my vhd that i uploaded uh, which would be this one that is right here and select that 
And once I have that in place, I can uh, select standard HD for the account type and keep host caching as is. I can add data disk to this if I want. I don't need to though. I'm just gonna leave it as is and then hit create and come back in a few minutes after my image has been created. Now that my Linux Mint uh, image is created, I can come into that image and I can create a VM here. Notice it's pointing to that VHD behind the scenes and uh, that's pointing to that resource group. So I'm gonna hit create VM here. And from this image, I can start the creation of a virtual machine, just like we would if we were creating a virtual machine from one of the marketplace images. So uh, I can name my virtual machine, Blaze Mint, and I'm gonna keep the rest of this more or less the same. Um, I'm going to select a size here. I'm gonna select a DS, uh, v DS2 V2, which is uh, two cores and seven gigs of RAM, which should be more than enough horsepower to push this image. And I'm gonna um, put in a username and then use a super secret password here to satisfy the password wizard. And I'm going to select uh, port uh, 22 to allow SSH into this virtual machine. Everything looks good there. Um, now for disk, I'm not going to, to select any data disk. I'm just going to select standard HD disk, HDD before this disk because I don't need anything beyond that. And then under networking, I'm going to create, um, I'm going to go select advanced for network security uh, group, and then I'm going to create a new one. Notice that it already has port 22 added. I'm going to add in another port and I'm going to call this one 5900 and um, this is for VNC, which VNC allows me to connect to this remotely and have a remote desktop experience to this Linux Mint virtual machine. Now, in a production environment, I probably would never do this to expose a VNC over to the public internet. I would probably want to have a v, uh, VPN and then just use the VPN tunnel to connect to Azure and then connect to that via to that desktop using VNC that way. But uh, in any case, uh, with this, I'm just going to expose it to the public internet for this demo. Now, I don't need any load balancing or anything like that. I'm going to take the defaults on the management. I don't need any shell extensions or cloud net for this. And then I'm going to review and create. And if all goes well, I should be able to click create for this virtual machine. And uh, let's go ahead and let this deploy all these resources and come back when it's finished. Okay, now I'm back in the Azure portal and most of the resources for this have already deployed. I'm gonna select my virtual machine and it is saying that it is creating at the moment. Now, the, sometimes on certain virtual machines, uh, the feedback won't come back for a while and you might get an error, but that doesn't mean that the virtual machine didn't successfully create. Um, but what you can do is you can test that depending on the virtual machine and you can connect to it uh, by way of SSH. But in this case, I'm going to, uh, use type VNC to get into this um, right here. I'm going to plug in my uh, IP address and hit connect. And, uh, and then I'm going to punch in the password that I assigned this whenever I created this virtual machine uh, in VirtualBox. And if all goes well, I should get my virtual machine uh, desktop here. So now this Linux virtual machine is running uh, Linux Mint on Azure, and I'm connected to it over VNC, and I'm able to command this virtual machine on Azure. So this uh, virtual machine is one that is not available in the marketplace, so it is one that uh, you can use, uh, create an image for, and then upload it to Azure, and then use it on Azure. Um, there are many others that, that would be the case as well. But for this demo, I did use a very simple one, which is Linux Mint, but the the possibilities for this are literally endless depending on what you want to use inside of your virtual machine images for Azure. Well, this wraps up our series on virtual machines on Microsoft Azure. We've looked at a lot of infrastructure as a service from the perspective of virtual machines. Next time we're gonna be looking at the networking components that go into making uh, networks available on Microsoft Azure. And then we're gonna do deep dives into a lot of those various networking components. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services, 
Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.